Before I was studying this, God showed me these things. Uh, it was actually, I was riding down the road. Uh, I think I was going to pick up back this summer. I can't remember when it was. It was at night. And man, I was just driving along and I was thinking. And, and God told me, hey, what are you going to do the next time you don't know what to do? And whenever he said that to me, it hit me. And I was like, whoa. What am I going to do? Man, I, I've been in situations. Uh, I'm, whenever, uh, well, a couple years back when I was working for my dad, and uh, whenever we were sitting there and we was working, and this goes for, or for even today and anybody in their job or at sports or really anything you do, and, man, you don't know what the next step's going to be, or uh, maybe we're laying flooring or something, and I don't know what, how to cut the next piece or something like that, and I'm just sitting there. And my dad always used to get on to me. He said, even when you don't know what to do, just do something. Don't just stand around. Don't just sit down and, and twiddle your thumb. Whenever you don't know what to do at the job, just, just do something. And, man, I begin to think about that whenever God was showing me this. Man, what am I going to do whenever I don't know what to do? You see, if you think about it, we've all been in that place somewhere in our life. You may be there tonight. I don't know. If you're not, I promise it's going to happen. You're going to get to a point somewhere in your life, maybe it's years down the road, I don't know. But there will be a time in your life where you sit back and you say, I don't know what to do next. And ever God showed me this, he gave me just a few things whenever I was studying, whenever I was reading. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not actually preaching out of James chapter number 4. But whenever I was reading and I was studying... And James chapter 4 is kind of what just came to my mind whenever I was reading this. And that verse that says, verse number 8, where it says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. And like we said, that, well, like I said a while ago, man, we witnessed that this morning. It's amazing how, man, we can go to church day after day or Sunday after Sunday or Wednesday after Wednesday. And, and man, we, uh, we try to meet with God and we do all the right things. But yet sometimes we just feel like God doesn't blow through this place. But yet we have a Sunday morning like we had this morning where the only uh, there really is no words to describe a service like we had this morning. And I've been in services like that before, but I've also been in services to where, man, it's almost like God's nowhere around that church. And that's why I love so much to be able to come into a church and the preacher don't, don't even read anything out of the Bible. We sing a few songs and people start popping up, testifying, and it just goes from there. And what's crazy about that is once people start drawing nigh to God, that's when God starts drawing nigh to us. And that doesn't only go in a church setting. That doesn't only go to where whenever we're at church or something like that, but that just goes in our everyday life. Whenever we get as close to God as we can, whenever we draw nigh to God, is when we start noticing God changing some things in our life. But what do we do when we don't know what to do? Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 9, you don't have to turn there, but it says, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. First thing that I believe we need to do that God showed me is, number one, hold to his promise. We've got to hold on to the fact that we know that he is going to be there no matter where we are. Then, and Joshua says, have I not told you? It's almost like God, uh, like Jesus is speaking to me whenever I was reading this. It's like God said, hey, just wake up. Have I not told you I'm going to be there? Have I not told you that everything that you do, I'm going to be there with you? But yet I stand up or I'll sit back or I'll start doing my own thing, thinking that, uh, thinking that I've got everything under control. When I don't know what to do, I'll start scrambling around or, or I just sit down on a pew and I begin to do nothing. But I want to encourage you this morning. When you don't know what to do, when you don't know what your next step is, just simply hold on to the promise that God's gave you. And that promise is, hey, I'm going to be with you wherever you go. I am a friend that seeketh closer than a brother. There is nothing that you can do in life that God will not be there right beside you. Amen. There is no step that you could ever take that God is not going to be there right with you. What do you do when you don't know what to do? I remember whenever I was studying this a while back and God began to show me and, and God told me that first little point. You know what? When you don't know, Caleb... Just hold on to what you already know. 
You see, you may not know what's going to happen next. You may not understand what's going to happen next. But one thing that I can say, just like Job, is that I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that there is a God living inside of me. There is nothing that I cannot accomplish. There is nothing that I cannot get through. There, there, is no, there is no dull moment. There is no spot in life when you don't know that God will not swoop in and say, Hey, this is what you do next. But you'll never get there if you don't hold on to the promise that God's already given you. You see, I'm not talking about something that God's saying, oh, well, I will do this or, or this will happen. No, he's saying, hey, I'm with you right now. And that's why that verse that we just read in January is talking about whenever we draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us because he is right there. He is listening to every prayer. He is listening to everything that you say. He knows exactly what you're going through in your life. He knows exactly when you're confused. He knows exactly what's happening in your life. And when, when you don't understand what's going to happen next, when you don't understand uh, why the death comes or, or why the diseases come or why the disappointments come, when we don't understand it all, God's sitting there saying, listen, you don't have to understand it. Just hold on to the promise that I've already given you. And I think Brother John kind of talked about this a while back. I can't remember. Somebody did. I don't know who it was. But when he's talking about, man, the promise of God, we've got that promise that we can hang on to. But so many times in life, it sounds so easy to say, well, we just got to hold to the promise. We just got to hold to the promise. It's, it's so easy to say, but we just got to, well, whenever we don't know, we just got to hold to the promise. I know it sounds easy. And I know it's not as easy as what it sounds. I know whenever life comes and things happen and we don't understand it, the first thing we want to do is sit down and just give up. First thing we want to do. I remember whenever uh, I was lifting weights a while, oh, a while back, and I was in school and I was playing sports and all that. I remember when I first started working out, First started lifting weights, man. Uh, the friend that was helping me, he was a big dude, twice, three times my size, not in fat, but just, just muscle. And, and, man, he was lifting weights. He could have picked me up and, like, threw me in the air four times without even breathing. And we was working out. I remember when I first started, when I was going, I was going. It seems like I wasn't getting nowhere. And the first thing I wanted to do was just sit down and just say, man, this stuff ain't for me. This just ain't for me. Whenever, we, whenever you start a new job and, and you're not picking up on that new job as quick as you want to, and the first thing you want to do is just sit down and give up. Man, it's just our nature. And one thing I talked to the teenagers this morning in Sunday school is about, man, whatever you do in life, whatever it is, whether it's spiritual, whether it's not spiritual, don't be one of those people that starts something and then just quits because it gets hard. Don't be one of those people where maybe you're playing sports, maybe you're on your job, maybe you're a boss, I don't know. But whatever it is, don't be one of those people that just quits and gives up whenever life gets hard. Because if you're one of those people that just gives up when something bad happens, you're not going to last nowhere for any amount of time. Because that's just what life is. Life's just, life just stinks sometimes. And you don't go very far down the road whenever something happens, whenever everything's going so good. And it's like, man, everything just goes, just goes completely down the drain all at one time. I remember when I, uh, back to the working out thing and back to the sports thing, I wanted to just give up. And, uh, and thankfully, I had that friend that was there that was pushing me and was, and was guiding me and telling me what to do, almost like Jesus does us whenever we want to quit. But, man, he was there and he was guiding me and he was directing me and telling me what to do and what to eat and what to drink and, and what to lift and all these things. So I kept doing it and I kept doing it. And, and I was able to get stronger and I was doing all these things. And I went and I was playing football and basketball and, and I was doing all that and Man, there was one time whenever I was playing football, I don't know when this was, this was, I think it was the beginning stage of me playing football, and I told the teenagers this, and they thought it was hilarious, but I was playing, and I, I, I wasn't the biggest guy on the field, okay? And I was up against this big dude. He was about, I don't know, six, 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 seven, and I was uh, five, eleven, six foot maybe, so he was a pretty big dude. And when I say buff, I mean this dude was buff, all right? And I don't know if y'all know what that means, but I mean like this is little old me and this is like big old him, right? Okay, I'm playing football, and I don't know what the drill's called wherever you line up and you lay on, the, on, you lay on your back, then you get up and you run at each other. What is that called? You don't know? Okay, I don't know either. Anyway, so you lay, I, I'm laying down right here, and there's the football in the middle, and then there's a guy laying right there, and the goal is whenever the whistle blows, you get up, you grab the football, and then you try to score a touchdown. So this is that big old dude versus me. 
And I remember sitting there thinking, I'm about to get myself killed. I already knew in my mind, this coach hates me. They're, they're like, the coach hates me. Like, there's no way in anybody's right mind that you're going to belittle on me against this big old dude and think something good is going to happen. I, it's, it's not. So I remember sitting there, and I remember thinking, all right, this is it. I'm about to die. It's, it's done. I'm, I'm about to die and go meet Jesus. And I was laying there, and that, that whistle blew. And I got up as fast as I could. And whenever I was running for the ball, all I see is this big old dude right in front of me. And I already knew in my mind, all right, this is it. I'm about to die. Let's just get it done with. I run. I grab the ball. As soon as I stand up, this dude pancakes me. And whenever I say, I mean, flattens me out, kills me. And I remember getting back up saying, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. There's no reason for me to come out here, put on these pads, and get murdered. There's no reason. So the first thing I went to do is, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to quit. This, this, this thing ain't for me. Then I remember my coach walking over there to me and saying, son, you all right? And I was thinking, no. I said, yeah, I'm good. He said, son, sometimes, and th this really got me. I don't know if he done this on purpose or he was just making fun of me. I don't know. But he said, son, sometimes when you get knocked down, you just got to get back up. Amen. Amen. And that stuck with me. For a long time. And that's something I've had to learn over the years. And I believe we all need to learn that. Is, man, whenever you get knocked back down, whenever the devil flattens you out, whenever you're doing your best to be the best that you can be, but then you're standing there all by yourself, and you got the devil over there, and you know he's coming for you, it gets a little scary. Amen. It gets, let's just be real. Whenever you're standing here, and it's just little old you against this great big devil. It gets a little scary. And the first thing that pops in your mind is either, I don't know what to do, but one thing I'm going to do is sit down. And we quit. But listen, what I want to encourage you tonight, and I want you to understand, is when you think it's just little old you against that great big devil, what you don't see is that great big God Amen. that's right beside you. And when you don't know what to do against that great big devil, just hold on to the promise that he is right there with you. Amen. What do we do when we don't know what to do? The first thing is hold to his promise. He will never leave. He will never forsake you. Don't be afraid of what life may bring at you. Amen. Yeah, it's confusing. Yeah, you may not understand it, but don't be afraid. Because you've got a God on your side that is bigger than any devil, than any demon, than anything that the devil could ever throw at you. You've got God on your side. And God can do anything. God can accomplish anything in your life if you hold on to the promise. Amen. Amen. What do we do when we don't know what to do? Number one, hold to his promise. Number two, Philippians 4.13, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Number one, hold to his promise. But number two, stand in his power. Amen. You see, sometimes we just got to stand. Sometimes when life knocks you down like we were just talking about, you got to get up and you just got to stand. And there are some things that you're going to have to stand for in life. And we're seeing that come to play right now in what's going on in this world. As Christians, as a group of believers, as a church in general, it's time for us to stand for some things. It's time for us to say, you know what? Some things have slid, but we're going to draw a line, and we're not going past that line. You see, the problem for a lot of people these days, this reminds me of a show, uh, the Andy Griffith show. There was an episode where little Opie was against this big bully, and Opie drew a line and said, don't come past that line. That boy stepped right over that line. And this is what we do. Opie went back. He drew a circle. He said, well, if you come in this line, if you come in this circle, it's going to be bad. You know what that, boy, that bully did? After he crossed the line, he stepped into the circle. And just as Christians, like we do, backing down, not standing, Opie says, he picks up a stick, puts it on his shoulder. 
and says, well, now you got to knock this off. What does that bully do? Walk over there and knocks it off. You see, I'm saying that to say this. We can't be those type of Christians where when we draw a line and it gets stepped past, we draw another line and another line and another line and another line until we get back in a corner and we've got nowhere else to go. We've got to be the Christians. We've got to be the ones that's going to draw a line and we're not backing out no more. Amen. Amen. We're not going to back up no further. This line has been drawn and we will stand. Whenever you get knocked down, and you don't know what to do. Just get up and stand. But what you got to understand is you won't stand long unless you got God's power. Amen. You won't make it very far unless you've got God on your side. And if you're saved and you're born again, and you know without a shadow of a doubt that you have Jesus in your life, you got to understand, and this is something that I had to understand that there is a power that lives inside of you. Because if you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. So there is a power that lives inside of you. The power that Philippians 4.13 is talking about, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So through Christ, I've got a power where there is nothing that I cannot do. There is no fire that you cannot make it out of. There is no step. Whenever you don't know what to do, there is nothing that you cannot do with God. What do we do whenever we don't know what to do? Number one, we hold to his promise. He's going to be there. He's going to be a friend. He's never going to leave. He's never going to forsake us. He's always with us. Number two, we have to stand in his power. Because we can't make it through this life by ourselves. Amen. Some of you may know that. Some of you may not yet. But in just the few years that, that I've been living, I'm only 21 years old, but I've had to learn that I can't make it but so far without God. You see, I can come up with a good message. I can type down everything that needs to be typed down. I can read. I can pray. I can do all of that. Have it all, have it all right. Yet without God, nothing is going to get accomplished. Amen. Whatever you do in your life, and I've been telling teenagers this, and I'm trying to drive it into them, is have a desire to please God. Amen. Whatever Amen. you do in your life, have a desire. Because with no desire, you will make it nowhere in a Christian life. Without a desire to please God, and this goes for me, this goes for the youngest or the oldest in here, without a desire for God, we will make it nowhere. Amen. After salvation, you've got to have a desire and a passion, and, and you have to let God consume your life if you want to make it anywhere as a Christian. Like I was telling them, and I've talked to a lot of people, and I've heard this, well, well I, I don't care. I don't care what happens. I don't care what the next step is. I don't care. I don't care if God ever talks to me. I don't care about this, and I don't care about that. And that one person I heard say that, I'll just put it this way. He is nowhere around a church. You see, you don't have to say, I don't care, in order for everybody else around you to know that you don't care. You see, you don't have to admit anything, but the life that you live shows it. That's why it's so important. Whenever you don't know what to do, don't just sit down and give up, but simply hold to his promise. Stand in his power, because there is nothing you cannot do with God on your side. What to do when you don't know what to do? Number one, hold to his promise. He'll never leave. He'll never forsake. Number two, stand in his power. There are some things that we all need to mark down and say, you know what, I'm going to stand on these things. But number three, Psalm 16, verse number 11, the Bible says, Thou wilt, thou wilt shew me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. 
We have to hold to his promise. We have to stand in his power. But lastly, we have to live in his presence. Everything that you do, you have to stay in the presence of God. The reason I say that is because I don't know about you. I don't know what you felt this morning, but I felt the presence of God this morning. Everything that we do, we have to make sure that we are right smack in the middle of God's will for our life. And if you are, you will live in the presence of God. Whenever you don't know what to do, but you're in the presence of God, it won't be very long. And God's going to tell you where your next step will be. Amen. But what happens? Think about this. If you don't know what to do, and you just sit down, what's going to happen to you? Really? Where will your next step be when if you just sit down, and give up. We've got to hold to his promise. We've got to stand in his power. But we have to live in his presence. The Bible says that there is fullness of joy in the presence of God. I'm going to give you these three quick things and then I'll be done. In the presence of God, number one, we find provisions. In the presence of God, we find things that we need that we don't know how to get. Amen. God gives it to us. I think I mentioned a while ago, we can only do so much. We can only go so far. We can only supply so much. But there are some spiritual things that we need as a Christian that you cannot get, you cannot fulfill without God fulfilling them for you. The only way that you can get provisions from God is if you are in the presence of God. And the quicker we learn that, the quicker we understand that in order to get the things that we need, we have to be in the presence of God. He will supply all of your needs. In the present we find in the presence of God we find provision. But number 2 in the presence of God we find protection. And I hit this a little bit last week, I believe it was. Whenever life just goes bad, whenever life just goes flat down the drain, the devil is going to start picking you apart. Because you see, once you're down, he is those type people where he's just going to steady kick you. He's going to steady kick you, and he is going to try his best to keep you down. Because if you're down, if you've sit down and you've quit, you're not accomplishing anything for God. And that is the devil's goal is to get every single one of us down on the ground and just to steady kick us. But you see, that's why we've got God. So whenever you get knocked down, God can come in. He can protect your life. He can protect your family. He can protect your testimony. He can protect... Everything you do, your ministry, this ministry, this church, that is what God does. He will provide and he will protect. Jacob, if you would, come play something on the piano just real quick, something soft. In the presence of God, we find provision for all of our needs. We find protection from all of life's shame. But lastly... In the presence of God, we find praise. What do you mean by that? Well, I think, I think we ex experienced that a little bit this morning. Amen. But one thing I thought about. Was whenever we're in the presence of God, we have praise. But I want, you to, I want to ask you this question just real quick. I wonder why. You're not praising. Could it be you're not in the presence of God? You see, if you're in the presence of God, you will have praise. Amen. Amen. So why are we not praising? Could it be 
we're not in the presence. You see, we experienced the presence of God this morning. But what we experienced this morning, it may not get us through next week. Amen. That's why it's so important for you, for me, to live in the presence of God. Because what we experienced this morning, yeah, it'll get us somewhere. Oh, for sure. It'll give us, it'll give us some energy and it'll give us some strength to move on a little bit further. But as humans, we need more. As Christians, as human beings, as we fail and we sin, we do all of those things. That's why it's so important to live in the presence of God. Because in the presence, we find provision. We find protection. But most of all, thankfully, we will find praise. Amen. And in anything you do in life, you will be able to give God a praise. Amen. When you don't understand, when you don't, when you don't get it, when you don't, when you just sit back and you think, God, why me? God, why does this have to happen to me? You can sit back and say, you know what, God? I don't understand. I don't know what to do next. But God, I'm going to hold on to your promise. God, the only way I'm going to do it, but I'm going to stand. In your power. But lastly, I'm going to live in his presence. And I believe every single one of us, myself included, needs to improve in that last one. Because we don't always live in the presence of God. Amen. We may hold on to his promise, and we can do that for a long time. God, I'm, I'm just going to hold on. I'm just going to hold on. I'm not going to give up. I'm just going to hold on. God, I'm even going to stand. God, I, I don't know how long I can do it, but I'm going to stand. But once it gets to living in the presence of God, that's where we go lack. Because you see, it sounds a whole lot better to live in our presence. Understand what I'm saying now? It sounds a whole lot better to not have to worry about God watching what we do. It sounds a whole lot better to, uh, for us to say, you know what? I'll take this under control. I'll figure out what to do next. When I don't know, I'll do it myself. That's when God said, they're saying, no, just live in my presence. Just live in my presence. Because in the presence of God, that's where you find provision. That's where you find protection. And after you have all of that, that's where we can finally sit down and just simply praise God. If you would stand to your feet, bow your head and close your eyes. I don't know if you got anything out of the message tonight. I hope you did. But I believe we all need to get to a point to when we don't understand what to do next, when we don't understand life, when we don't know what to do, we hold to His promise. We stand in His power, but most of all, we live in His presence. You see, if we all would say, you know what, devil? I'm going to stand. I'm going to live in the presence of God. I wonder... I wonder what Guest Baptist could change in this community. If this group of people would say, you know what? I'm going to live in the presence of God day in and day out. 24-7, I'm going to live in the presence of God. I wonder what would happen in our life. I wonder what type of, uh, what, what difference that we can make in this community. If we would all say, you know what? When I don't know what to do, most of all, I'm just going to live in the presence of God. I'm going to pray. He's going to play just a few more minutes. And I ask you if you still would keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. But I want to give you the opportunity. If somebody in here needs to come to this altar and, and tell God, you know what? God, I'm going to live in your presence. I'm going to hold to your promise. I'm going to stand in your power. These altars are open, but I ask you, keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a minute. I promise nobody come to this altar will be done. 
But whenever I get done praying, I want you to feel free to come down to this altar. And maybe you're one here tonight, and you can say, Preacher, I don't know what to do. Friend, you can leave tonight knowing what to do the next time you don't know what to do.